Lindsay Vanderwall Photography offers natural light photography for any occasion. With over 10 years of experience in the industry, we promise you professionalism and quality photography always. Affordable pricing for weddings, sports, family, and senior sessions. Contact today to book. Today's guest is a great friend of mine. Uh, I've known him all my life. It's none other than Mr. Mike Foote. Mike, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you, brother Billy. I appreciate it. 2020 was, for high school athletes, it was just, that was the end. Yeah. For, for, for spring athletes. Yep. But college, it could come back if they wanted to. Right. You know, they right. had that fifth year option. Yep. I know you can't do that in high school, but I mean, how many guys, I mean, it wasn't just our guys, but how many kids got just, they just got robbed. They robbed their senior year. They literally got robbed their senior year, man. And I know, I know how, how important that senior year is. Like just, I, I know just having a normal senior year, you think about it a lot. Like I think about my senior year all the time. I, I, mean, I don't know why, but I think about, I mean, I guess because I work for the school, school board and like the, these times of the year, I remember it, I, it, it, it comes back. I go, oh, we were about this time we were getting ready for graduation. About this time, blah, blah, blah. This time we were on a senior, senior trip. This time, blah, blah, blah. This, they're getting ready for prom. Oh, oh, prom. Going back, having flashbacks. <laughs> prom. Even though it was some time ago, you it, it never does leave. Like yeah. it's always there. Yeah. Um, but it's amazing how just the littlest thing can trigger. Like it's like music. You can hear music, mm-hmm. and I remember. Oh my gosh, I was, I was here. I was working here. This happened. <laughs> that's why. That's why everybody can tell you where where they were on nine eleven. Yep. Not just because of the horrific things that happened, but because of the media. They, it just it was embedded in your brain that you were. I was here. I was there. I, I was doing this. I was with so and so. Yeah. We were here. We were talking about this. Yeah. It's very, 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 very surreal. Like it's just one of those things. It's, Correct. It's, it's, Correct. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yep. Yep. Um, well, I was on the. Uh, I was actually on the school board at that time. I was. Right. I was blessed with being elected to. Uh, not sure why I got involved in politics. I was on the city council, Webster, for five years, and that was kind of by. Def- I, I wanted to get interested in the city and right. what they were doing. Right. And so uh, I talked to Udell Hall, and he said, yeah, we'd be glad to have you on there. You just got to win election. I said, well, I was unopposed. <laughs> so I went in uh, automatically, and awesome. it was on there for five years. And then I thought about, well, you know what, maybe maybe county politics. You know, I got a kids in school, yeah. and that's, you know, vested interest. That's right. where I want to go. So I was uh, ran the first time in 1990 and got defeated. Uh, funny thing about it, it's kind of bittersweet. In 1990, there were 13,000 registered Democrats in the county and 3,000 registered Republicans. Well, I ran on a Republican ticket. I got beat by 250 votes. <laughs> oh, wow. So while I was sad I got beat, I was happy about the outcome. Yeah, the outcome, I mean, yeah. It really wasn't bad for, Absolutely. for the numbers that I was facing. Right. And so I ran again in 1994 with the help of uh, Charles Oswald, was big in the teachers' union at the time, and uh, Jim Roberts. And Jim Roberts really was the main catalyst that, that helped me get elected yeah. because he was also the head of the Republican Party at the time right. in the county. Right. And uh, we went out and did pancake breakfast like every other week all over the county. we go to communities, went out to, went out to Royal, went to the villages, two or three different places, and had pancake breakfast and, and got me a chance to, you know, what they call press the flesh. Yeah, kind of get familiarized. Yeah, yeah. Talking to people and mm-hmm. shaking hands and yep. Kissing babies, yeah. that type of thing, and so <laughs> it was. Uh, it was a great experience, and and, and I and I won uh, decisively that election, and then was able to serve for uh, uh, sixteen years. Yeah, and and loved every minute of it from right. nineteen ninety four to two thousand ten. Right, it was just a great experience. Our school district uh, moved in a positive way. Uh, that time, uh, Preston was the superintendent when I came on, and then Rick uh, won election, and he was there the rest of the time. And uh, we just it was it was just a great experience. I loved going into the schools, and uh, 
and the participating with the school programs. You know, I used to go to FFA dinners all the time yep. and, and go to Webster Elementary and lay on the floor with the kindergartners <laughs> and read them books. <laughs> That's because Shirley Parker was a teacher. Yeah, yeah, Actually, yeah. It was pre-K. Pre-K, yeah. Uh, dressed up in an M&M costume one time for uh, Halloween, I think, and sat in her classroom. And yeah. the kids are all like, who's this big M&M guy? <laughs> It's a big blue, big blue M and M, about the size bigger than your, bigger than your emblem here. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> and hilarious. it was so funny. But uh, you know, we just had a great time with it. Yeah. And, and the good thing was, I had a wife who was so supportive. Uh, she was Mrs. School Board. Her when I was the president of the youth league, she was yeah. Mrs. President yeah. because she always was working behind the scenes yeah. and and pushing me and and making me do this, that, and the other to to be what I term as a successful uh, time on the school board. And, well, uh, well, you yeah. know, when you said when you said earlier, when you're talking about the Army, you said when we joined the Army. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to comment and say, it's not just you. It's everybody that's involved with you. So yep. Judy went with you in the Army. She was in the Army, too. Yeah, exactly. And that's a lot of people don't they don't think of it that way. They They just think. Whoever's there is overseas or whatever. They're in they're in um, serving their time. But they don't know the sacrifice that that the the family and the wife go through, or oh, yeah, yeah. or the husband. Especially there are, if you have kids at home, absolutely. Because you know, they're mom and dad. If you're out in the field or going absolutely. on a weekend bivouac, something absolutely, like that, they, they got to do it all. And you know, the, and it, it's so true that every behind every successful or every great man is a great woman. I believe that. I, I absolutely, absolutely, I, and I have no, I have no problem saying that out loud <laughs> that's some nor do i i mean it's it's absolutely true because there are things that i that i do for her and she does for me and your wife does for you and you do for her that it, it, that's why it's a partnership it's a, it's it's literally you know it's it's one hand washes the other yeah and um you literally are a team yeah well and i've told uh, friends of mine, I've told my kids, I've told family members, marriage is the toughest job you'll ever have. Yeah, and it's a it's a give and take, and it's a, a split down the middle, and a push and shove, and and you know good times, bad times. Right. You just got to persevere, and uh, you know, of course, our faith in, in God is what helps us a lot too. We you know, if we're in town, we're in church. We do. We go every Sunday, and yeah. uh, you know, my kids were little. They want us to go to the to the Baptist church because that's where all the kids went. Yeah, and uh, we said no. We're we're going to the Methodist church. That's our church. That's yeah. my home church. I've been a member there fifty two years now, yeah. and uh, I'm not changing. So, yeah. uh, and I, you know, my 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 daughter goes to church in Orlando. Kara goes to church here. Mikey goes to church somewhere uh but as long as they go i don't care where you go just yeah, go absolutely yeah you gotta have that uh, spiritual part of your yeah. life and you gotta absolutely you just gotta get in there with it so yeah I, i'm i'm proud to say my uh, you know that we go to church on the sundays and then and, and we are believers so yeah uh, absolutely it's just and i and i believe that's what has Help me be successful. Oh, am yeah. I multimillionaire? Oh yeah. No, but am I rich? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. There, are, there are far more important things than than um, you know the tangible objects. It's, it's, it's you know, they, it's truly family and friends and gosh, if you can, you know, it reminds me of the old Tombstone movie where he says, you know, why'd you do that for him? He says, because Wyatt Earp is my friend, and he yeah. says, well, I got tons of friends. He goes, I don't. I don't. And that is so true, man. That, that'll that'll hit you, man. Yeah, that'll hit you hard because yep. that's a true friend right there. Someone who will who will do anything for you. And um, no question, you're, that. you're you're absolutely blessed if you can if you can have a handful of people like that. I mean, in in your life, in uh, your time. You know, and trust me, I do. Yeah, I do. I've got absolutely. You know, my buddies that that are mostly coaches. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but some other guys that I could call in a moment's notice, they drop what they're doing. And Absolutely. Come yep. um, what is um, growing up? I mean, you had to fall in love with baseball somehow. But who was who was someone you emulated or you looked up to? You're like, man, because I know your dad had to have baseball on. If he knew all the rules and he was coaching, yeah. What, what was it? Who was who were you? Who were the foots watching on football or uh, baseball? Sorry. Well. Backing up a little bit, my dad actually played, had a professional contract for one game. 
Okay. <laughs> One game back in the forties. Gotcha. His brother was in the in the minor league system. Gotcha. And uh, they needed a catcher that day. And they signed my dad to a one-day contract. Oh, that's cool. And he got to catch. And his brother was a pitcher, I believe. His brother pitched that game. And so uh, that was back in the 40s up in upstate New York or wherever they were. And uh, then, of course, my cousin Barry was uh, just a phenom. He was drafted right out of high school. Uh, he was, In fact, he was the number three pick in the nation that year. And the only reason number three – Montreal lost the coin flip to San Diego. <laughs> San Diego picked another catcher. Oh, gotcha. Montreal picked him. And the number two team picked a pitcher, I think. Gotcha. But, uh, Barry, what year was that? In 1970. Gotcha. Right out of high school. Barry graduated, went uh, signed with the Expos, and was in their minor league organization about three years. And then he made the big leagues in 74. He was only in Montreal two years because Gary Carter came along. <laughs> yeah. And Gary Carter was a, you know, a phenom in his yeah. own right. And uh, Barry went to the Phillies for a couple of years, and he went to Chicago Cubs about four years, I think. And then he finished his career with the Yankees as a player uh, the year they went to the World Series and won against the Dodgers. Okay. He had won at bat in that World Series. <laughs> Barry did. <laughs> Face Steve, uh, oh, geez, right-hander, fireballer, Steve, somebody. Threw three pitches and Barry was back in the dugout. <laughs> oh but he batted in the World Series and he got a ring. And right. I, you know, so to say who did I look up to, I, I just I love baseball altogether. Yeah. I used to actually play a dice game that I found somewhere. Or I want to say I invented it, but I know I didn't. We roll dice and whatever the number was, you got that. And and we used to, my brother and I used to play against each other. I was always the American League. For some reason, I liked the American League. Yeah. And, and uh, I was a baseball card collector as a kid. Uh, but probably the, the person that I looked up to most was my dad. Yeah. Because of uh, his dedication to the game and what he taught me about it. Gotcha. <clears throat> so, uh, of course, I was a fan of the big leagues at the time. And yeah. Not so much anymore because of the politics and stuff involved with that yeah. and, the, and the money that's ridiculous. Yeah. And, you know, I see on the uh, – Facebook a lot of times about how this team would compare to this team. Bob Gibson was one of my favorite pitchers. Oh, yeah. Bob Gibson. He pitched three games in a World Series in a seven-game series in, in eight days, nine days. Oh, my god! You wouldn't get three guys pitch three games in nine days this year, no. this day and time for anything in the world. You know what? You know what's, you know what's weird is um, – <laughs> I'm I'm a big Pirates fan. Yep. And there's I love the tradition. So in 1960 they played the Yankees. Yep. And Game Seven was played at th it, the game was over at 3:30 in the afternoon. No. That was uh, Bill Mazeroski. <laughs> that was Mazeroski hit it over the left field yep. wall, right? So, <laughs> but it's funny because and it was on October 13th, 1960, and every year on October 13th at that time they play that. Game winning over the they have like a like they get like a it's like a not a vigil or whatever they call it like with like a but like a like a little ceremony type yeah okay. they they replay the no I, I take it back I think they replay the entire game okay but they that area is now at the University of Pittsburgh and it's the wall is still there that were Forbes Field is that that's where Forbes okay. Field was yep and um, so the University of Pittsburgh is there now which they were I mean they were side by side anyways back in the day but they just used that land but um, you talk I mean like 3.30 in the afternoon the game's over with yeah I'm like can you imagine like people cause I mean like going back to what we said about if they if they had like some kind of telecast uh, I'm calling in sick that day. I got to watch Game Seven. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm that's, that's lunchtime when the game starts. Yeah. You know. Well, I was at junior crazy. high down in Delray Beach in the '60s when uh, St. Louis and Detroit and St. Louis and Boston were playing. Yeah. Well, I had a, a social studies teacher today, Mr. Thomas. Great guy. He had TV in our room. We watched the World Series <laughs> while we were in class. And and when the class was over, I'd go to my next teacher and say, Hey, I need to work with Mr. Thomas. And I'd go back to his class to finish watching the game. <laughs> you're you're going in between innings. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, exactly. I didn't miss anything, did I? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that that's a good thing. You know, the World Series was played in the daytime. Yeah. And and people showed up. 
people yeah. who just showed up. Now it's all about ratings and stuff. They want it. They want it prime time. That yep. money. Yeah. Advertisements. <laughs> exactly. There's no reason a college football game should be played at ten thirty at night. Correct. There's no reason. No reason. I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're in Hawaii. It shouldn't be at ten thirty at night. <laughs> I don't care how the sun works. Put it on prime. Put it on six o'clock and just get it over by ten. Yeah. Nobody wants to be it. That's why I couldn't catch a lot of cars in this game because they'd play at ten thirty at night. Yep. And it's like you, you watch the games now, Colorado. That's twice this year. Colorado has ended at two one thirty two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Remember those games? That was like a World Series game or something. You'd like, <laughs> oh man, they went into thirty seven innings. I mean, they're not like you know, like twenty something innings one time. The Yankees played, and I stayed there and watched all. They're like, why? <laughs> you know, they have Sports Center. <laughs> they have phones. Well, they didn't have Sports Center back then. <laughs> no, this is recent. Oh, okay. yeah, like they, 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 like recently. Um, within the past five years, they've had a couple games go into midnight. Yeah. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Webster Ace Hardware and Farm Supply are generous sponsors for today's podcast. They have been a family-owned business for 27 years. This helpful hardware store sells items such as archery, Ariat clothing and boots, Wrangler jeans, case knives, Hammond's candies, and live fishing. They also have a full selection of hardware, RV supply, propane, Ben Moore, Royal and Clark, and Kennington paints. You need a barn or fencing job done? Custom barn kits and roofing metal are provided at your local Ace Hardware store. What about a new grill for the yard? Traeger, Big Green Egg, Weber, and Blackstone are found here, along with all the accessories to go with them. Stock up your workshop with DeWalt, Milwaukee, or Craftsman Tools. They got you covered. Remember to go to Ace.com to shop their entire line to have items shipped directly to the store. I remember one time, I remember one time, I'm at Disney. And the Braves and Pirates are playing, and it's I and I can't. It, the, the score is tied, obviously, because it's they're going in extra innings. And there's a play at the plate. They throw the ball. Michael McHenry takes the ball and tags out. And I can't remember who the runner was. He's out by a mile, and then umpire goes, "He's safe." The Braves were the home team. He just wanted to go home. Yeah, he was. He wasn't. Out. He wasn't safe by by a mile. He was out. <laughs> and I'm. And I'm. I remember it being because we watched in the break room, and I remember like we did a parade, came back in. It's still going on. I mean, this game started at seven thirty. We we worked till midnight. <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on? And then 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 I got to see that, and I go, all that for that, like. That's what. It, that's how the, the game's going to end. You've got to be kidding. We got hosed. We got hosed. <laughs> it, it was unbelievable. I'm, I'm hoping I can get. Uh, he, he's called the Fort uh, Michael McHenry. They, they call him the Fort because it's Fort McHenry, and mm-hmm. I think it's Kentucky or Virginia. And um, they call him the Fort, and he's trying to get him on the show. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a really cool guy. I got to meet him one time. But I want to ask him, like, what was going through your mind, man? Because I'm in Orlando mad. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine you tagging the guy and going, like, his face is like, what? No. Man, that's, that's like, crazy. That's like an uh, umpire blowing that call on the perfect game. Oh, yeah. With Detroit. Was that Angel Hernandez? Was that no, the same guy? Or no, the, it was Jim Joyce. Oh, who was a older highly guy. respected oh, yeah. umpire. And he just he just blew it. And I yeah. don't I don't get it. I now, felt so bad for that. And that was before that. replay. Yeah. Yeah. And and I don't know Which if was were not long ago. Because that was uh I mean his umpire's decision is umpire decision. Yes. But if a rule applies then you can challenge you can, it. Yeah, challenge but, it though. I felt so bad for the umpire. I felt I bad too. for the kid. I did too. I felt bad for the umpire because he had already made the call and he's like, Ugh. Yeah, what yeah. an idiot. And he knew it. And you yeah. know, he fessed up to it and manned up. So, you know, good for him. But that was that was very sad <laughs> that, that that happened. Uh, um <laughs> Yeah, I mean it, but but at, you were an umpire. So yep. have you did you ever have any of those calls where you were like, oh man, I messed up. Or were you like pretty yeah. much, pretty much Johnny on the spot? Well, I, 
positioning is important when you're umpiring. Absolutely. If you're in the right position, 99 times out of 100, you're dead on. Gotcha. But I've had some calls that were questioned. Uh, the game at Tavares one time, Tavares and Eustace, I think, were playing. And I was behind the pitcher's mound on the inside and had to play at first. And the guy catches the ball at first, and I called him out. Well, the coach over there said, no, nah, he pulled his foot, pulled his foot. And I said, okay. So I get the home plate umpire, and I said, because he's looking down the line, I said, did he come off the bag? He said, yes, he did. And I said, okay, the runner's safe. Yeah. Well, the other coach went nuts. And I said, look, we're just trying to get the call right. Right. I'm out of position because I'm inside and yeah. I can't see his He had foot. a better view of it. And he leans in. I said, that's Absolutely. his job right. to watch the runner right. uh, at first right. and see if the guy pulls. Right. I said, he pulls. So the change, I'm changing the call yeah. and he's safe. Yeah. And uh, a game I had at the Claremont one time. Claremont played on Bishop Field there. They were playing Groveland. Yeah. Ball hit. It was kind of a line shot to left field. Ball hits. The kid comes up, scoops. I said, it's safe. Ball hit the ground. The Groveland coach went nuts. He caught that ball. You got to be blah, blah, blah. I mean, he argued for a while. I said, coach, we're done. Go back. I've made the call. Yeah, if he scoops, <laughs> that's not a catch. <laughs> so when the kid comes running in from left field, I was still behind second base. Yeah. I started walking that way because the coach comes out and said, did you catch that ball? He said, no, sir, it hit the ground. And I looked at the coach, and I turned away. He looked at me and said, he kind of dropped his head. <laughs> I didn't get, did, kids are, kids yeah. won't lie. Yeah. They're not going to lie. No. <laughs> I mean, they, they really won't. Yeah. I mean, Not about something like not that. A, no. Because I, mean, no, I, would, I wouldn't either. Yeah. But I had some I had some good experiences umpiring. Uh, I did it for seven years with Lake Sumter Umpire Association. Uh, Floyd Williams was the head of our association. Okay. Uh, Floyd actually got his start umpiring with my dad. Oh, yeah. Uh, my dad hired him at Webster Elementary. And one day my dad was going to umpire a game, and he said, Floyd, why don't you come with me and, and umpire? Yeah. He said, I don't know anything about baseball. He said, well, you can learn. And it's just I'll put you at third base. There won't be much action there. <laughs> Funny enough, before the game, the home plate umpire was walking behind home plate, and it was a wild throw. Hit him in the side of the head, Ooh. right in his ear, and he started bleeding out of his ear. Ooh, so good. he had to go to the hospital. Yeah. Well, it was a game between South Sumter and Okoy. My dad had was from South Sumter, Webster, knew all South Sumter kids. The Okoy team was the kids he had coached when he lived over there for four years, five years in Okoy. And so he told Floyd, he said, I don't want to go behind the plate. He said, I know all these kids. He yeah. said, you go back. He said, I don't have any equipment. He said, I'll give you mine. I got it with me. And, and that was when they had the old outside chest yeah, protector. Yeah, the big old chest protector. And, and the, knee, the shin guards and the mask. And so Floyd got behind the plate. First game he'd ever umpired, and he gets stuck behind the plate. It was a great game because everybody threw strikes. I think it was one nothing game. We got beat. Yeah. We got shut down with a, a one-hitter, a no-hitter, and – Bud Fussell threw a one hitter and we got beat one to nothing by Okoy. <laughs> <laughs> but Floyd got his start there and now, yeah. you know, yeah, 40 years later, he's yeah. in the FHSA Hall of Fame as an umpire. Oh, that's awesome. He just, he was a phenomenal. You just never done. Great judgment. He knew the rules yeah. left and right and, uh, I, and, and was a good, a, a good mentor for me to, to be better at what I did. Yeah. I think that's very, I mean, like you said, like if you know the rules, that's, you are a step ahead of the game. Yeah. Not saying that you, you, I mean, it's kind of implied. You should know the rules. Right. But there are a lot of rules. So yeah. you, sometimes you have to refer to the handbook. You right. know, that's why they give you a handbook. Correct. Um, but the guys that can, I'll tell you, you can do that. And I, every time there's been an argument, I am right behind him because I back him 100%. Is Alan Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> when we played, when we, I, I helped him coach T ball and eight, eight, you know, seven, eight year olds, 10 year olds, whatever, uh, with both his girls growing up. If there was ever a call and he went out there, I was like, Alan got this. Alan's got it. Yeah. I know, I know he knows what he's doing. And he never, he never got overturned. He would, he would always go question. You know what I mean? And he wasn't like he wasn't. It wasn't in a jerky way. It was like, like, sir, you know, come here. Mm -hmm. I need to ask you. Let me, let me ask you this. This says this. Blah blah blah. He had. <clears throat> Alan may have had a rule book with him, but he never had to result. Like he never had to pull. Now article section. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, four dash. You know, he didn't have to do that. He was like, look, this is not. This says this, you know, and the and the guy says, "Yeah, he's right." 
every time. Yeah. And somebody like that, you want in your corner. You know Absolutely. You know what yeah. I mean? well, that's, that's why it's so important. Oh, and, yeah. and, and it helps your credibility yeah. as an umpire yeah. uh, or a coach either way. Uh, I was coaching a little league guy, T-ball, not, I guess a majors game in Bushnell one time. And the umpire had his rule book in his back pocket. Well, we had a guy at first and second – and uh, kind of a little pass ball. Well, the guy at first runs down second base. Now two are standing on the base. Yep. Well, the guy at first turns around and runs back. The umpire called him out. I said, whoa, wait a minute. Why are you calling him out? He said, because two guys can't occupy the base. I said, well, yeah, they can. I said, why'd you call him out? Because he can't touch a base when he's t- – I said – he can touch a base. I said, now if they tag him, he's out. Then he's out. Right. And leave. But they can both not. stand on there. But they can both stand there. Oh, yeah. I said, but he ran back to f- first safely. Yeah. Well, you're not right. I said, I am right, and I'm going to protest the game. So he pulls his rule book out. He said, look right here. Two men may not occupy the base. Unless they're tagged, they are safe. <laughs> okay. He's safe at first. <laughs> and I just turned and walked away. I mean, I didn't gloat or anything. I just. Yeah. Because Smack I knew- the book out of his hand. This stupid, <laughs> stupid idiot. Yeah, I, I knew the rules, so I, was, I knew I was going to win that argument. But anyhow, it just it's just something that's always stuck with me, and, and that's something I have you know tried to impress on my son over the years. Yeah. And, and I think he'll tell you, if Dad wasn't a good coach, he knew the rules. Yeah, he might not be a good coach, but he knows the rules. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just something I always pride of myself on, and. And because as high school, we had to go take a test every year, oh, yeah, a yeah. rules test. Yeah. And that's because uh, they, I mean, things change to get you well to get your rankings. Yeah. Oh, and, they, they, yeah. Uh, in seven years, I was fortunate enough to get up to a rank four official. Uh, what is the t- was the highest? Five. Five. OK. And of course, Floyd and uh, Dennis uh, Durkin were both rank fives. They've been umpiring for years and years. Uh, and and I actually got to ump. We umpired district tournaments. We did yeah. uh, sub regional games, regional games. That I got to be the third man in the crew, and then we did a, a final four yeah. uh, down at Boardwalk in Baseball. Oh, remember I remember that. that. Yeah, and it was uh, I think Tampa Jesuit or Tampa Catholic was the school, right? And they won that game, and uh, that was my experience as a, as a umpire in a state tournament. Yeah, that was pretty cool. What would you? What grade would you give Dennis Johnson? Dennis was a <laughs> Dennis was a good umpire. I give he him had, a, I give him a, a solid three out of what five. I give him half. Yeah, one. yeah. I, I mean say, that's fair. I'd say a three. I, I like I yeah. like Mr. John, I, I like Dennis Johnson. I give him a hard he, time every time. I, well, I, I haven't seen him in. His, I mean, I haven't seen him in a long time. So. Yeah, he's still living. Okay, I was just making yeah. sure because I'm like I haven't still, seen him in a while. Still hunting dogs. Okay, good. Because um, he's uh, so he, funny. In fact, him and his wife, Joe, I think, just had their fiftieth anniversary. Oh, I love his wife. But he was. Uh, he and I had a game of use this one time. Is the yeah. only time I seen uh, one of my umpires eject a coach. <laughs> and he ejected the coach because he atta- uh, charged out at me out in the mid. I was behind second base again, yeah. and he comes charging out there. And Dennis said, "Oh, you can't do that. You're gone." Did Dennis have a lit cigarette in his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, not on the field. That was only in Webster. Yeah. I think it was legit. In- <laughs> <laughs> he had, he had this like the mask and the cig coming out. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you, Dennis Johnson. If, if, if you ever listen to this podcast, I love you. Yeah. Miss you, buddy. Yeah. Um, those are just guys I grew up with, man. Right. I mean, like, like I was telling, um, oh, who was it? I was telling, talking about Tony Gator. Remember Tony Gator, big big guy, um, umpire the guys uh, in Center Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, no, Gator McMullen. Or Gator, I, but I thought it was Tony. He was the chief of police over there. Oh, okay, yeah, that's who it was. Yeah, Gator McMullen. I, I kept calling him Tony. Yeah, Gator. funny story about him. I was yelling at my son one day on the field, telling him, "You got to come on, I catch you." And he comes over to the coach, "You got to stop doing that." I said, "What?" He said, "Stop yelling at that boy." I said, "That's my son." He said, "I don't care if you yell at him again, I'm gonna toss you out of here." I said, "Okay." <laughs> He kind of humbled me real quick. Mike, Mikey's like, uh, yeah. what'd you say that? Yeah, thanks, Gator. I appreciate it. <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah. I, yeah, he was, he was, he, yeah, uh, I, I, I vaguely remember him. Yeah. I don't remember him as well as I do Dennis. And like, yeah. I, like I was telling him, like I said on the other podcast, is, um, Dennis would never tell you it was a ball. He would just be quiet. And of course, you think as, as an adult, you know, it's either strike, no call, is a ball. But, I was afraid I didn't hear him. Yeah. Like I said, I, like before I said, I thought I was going deaf. 
Like I was like, oh God, I can't hear. <laughs> get, get this helmet on, you know. Yeah. I can't hear. What do you, what do you say? And I, I'd look, and of course, Dennis is. <laughs> you know, no, but he, he wouldn't say anything. So I'm like, oh my God, like, was it a ball? So I'll just stand there. <laughs> you know, I would never swing, but um, um, funny story. I'm going to, again, I'm going to tell a story that's, uh, it's going to embarrass me, but not really. But it's it's almost like it's it's uh, historic. Um, Mr. Shirley, you, you, you ever seen me ask him about it? One time, I I don't know if I swung and made contact, or it was a it had to be, or either or either it was a walk and I tripped. No, it had to be a swing because I was running to the base. I tripped and I crawled on all fours. I turtle crawled. <laughs> But I was safe. I made it. I made the throw. <laughs> I was faster on all fours than, than I was on my <laughs> no. Than I was on my own two feet. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, and, and so you can ask Mr. Shirley. Um, <laughs> you can ask him about Billy Goble's uh, turtle crawl, and he will. He it. He, it's like it happened yesterday. He's like, yeah. yeah, they're Billy. I'm like, oh my gosh, but it's. It's a great time. Yeah, there's so many stories about your coaching career and playing, playing when you're a kid and stuff. It's it's just phenomenal. I was I was not much of a hitter ever. Yeah, but I led the league in getting hit by the pitch. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't afraid to lean you in. You were like the Kirsty Meredith. I, yeah, of, I wasn't uh, afraid to lean in, <laughs> and and usually I try to turn, so I took it on the butt cheek and yeah. not in the head or something. Yeah. Uh, I'd either walk or get hit by a pitch or strike out. Yeah, I just. Wasn't a very good hitter wow. in my playing days, but uh, I had some, you know, so many funny instances in, in, in coaching and stuff. Thirteen-year-old team, uh, your buddy Jonathan camps up to bat, <laughs> and I'm throwing batting practice. <laughs> well, I'm not a very good pitcher. I hit him with a pitch, and I look and I said, "Oh, sorry, Jonathan." I look up, he's running to the mound with the bat over his head. <laughs> I said, "Dude." <laughs> And then he gets about halfway. Come on, Big Jake. Slut. He, Calm down. He gets about halfway and starts laughing. I said, I said, <laughs> he I said, got you. I said, get he back in that dug Oh, box. my gosh. Of course, I didn't hit him anymore, but I kept pitching to him. <laughs> well, that, that was he a good was so deterrence. Funny. He was so funny. My gosh. Um, I want to ask you this, and I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to pinpoint. I'm trying to find out who – the umpires were the night that that um, Tater hit that ball over in Center Hill, hit over hit it over City Hall, and I don't remember who it was, but I'm trying. Man, I'm like, I'm like, I can't be the only. I mean, I I know there were several other guys. That every, every every time I I tell that story, it's like, well, Gator probably was there. Yeah, but it was like it, you know what I mean. Like every time, every time you tell the story, it gets bigger and bigger. You know, yeah. I'm not trying to be like that, but that's how people think. When I tell it, people think that's probably not the first time he's told that, mm -hmm. which is, they are absolutely right. Yeah. But the first, that, that's probably not how he told it the first time, you know, like, every, <laughs> and then there was a helicopter, you know, like, you're like what? Um, no. Um, but, but saying that going back to the teams, the, the kids we had, like, I, man, all the Simmons kids, what? Yeah. They were, that's baseball water right there. I don't know where they got it from, yep. but the whole family, yeah, with JD and Justin, Brian, Brian, Mike, <laughs> Mike. Yeah. yeah, especially Justin. Good God, I, I mean, he was a phenomenal oh, pitcher. He man, left-hander. Shout and, out. And it, well, yeah, exactly. And funny thing about it, the year that I won the T-ball, yeah, was my third year. It was his first year in T-ball. Mm -hmm. I picked him for the All-Star team. He had the best glove in the league. <laughs> yeah, he never dropped the ball. Oh yeah. And he played and, first base, the yeah. ball thrown there. He was going to scoop. Snag his it. glove was as long as his arm. But he, he can handle it. He just used that for counterbalance. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, Justin yeah. Simmons was a heck of a baseball oh, yeah. player. Um, that's another uh, – I talk about Justin all the time. Um, I'm about to have him on the show one day. Um, just talk about baseball. Yeah. It'd be a good show. Um, so, he did all this stuff – and let's 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 get to where you are now. You, I want to hear about how you got into this little 
I, and I'm being facetious Business. <laughs> when I say little. Yeah. This little broadcast that we hear every Friday night. Um, give us that 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 how how that came in into play. Yeah. Well, uh, oddly enough, the same year that I started at the bus garage was the and then got the baseball job. Uh, a local radio station contacted the school and said, "Hey." We'd like to do your uh, broadcast your football games on right. Friday night. <clears throat> would you Would you like that? Be interested in that? And uh, I guess Doc and Coach Sherman talked about it and said, "Yeah, that'd be pretty cool." And so uh, they said, "Well, do you know anybody that could broadcast it for us? We don't have anybody at the station." And the first name that popped to mind was Mark Johnson. I mean, you know, Coach Sherman knew him and knew what he could do and what he had done in the past. I guess. And uh, so he talked to Mark and, and uh, I guess told him about it and everything. Well, Mark turned around and called me and said, hey, look, what do you think about this? We do radio broadcasting on Friday nights for this radio station, WKFL it was, uh, which is not there any longer, and uh, and do football every Friday night. I said, yeah, that sound, might be okay. I said, you're going to be the, the, the main guy and I'll be the color coordinator afterwards yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what happened after you call right. it out and uh he said yeah let's do that so uh we uh we started it and we did it that first year and and you know kind of walking our way through it learning our way through it and, and making sure we try to read the roster know the names and all that stuff and and uh and then the next year we did it again radio show I think we did it with the radio for three years. Right. And then and they kind of had some stuff going on at the station. And and we said, well, you know what? You're, it's not working for us. So yeah. let's go out on our own. So yeah. we got with the, the uh, Kane and Smith, who was our engineer. And uh, his dad is real good with computers. And so he said, Kane, what do you think about us doing a uh, – something on the internet right still be the broadcasting but not have the live radio but the internet and tie it in through cell phones you know of course cell phones are booming there right. <laughs> and it just you know one thing led to another and we got equipment we got headsets and and the equipment like you've got the electronics and all that stuff and Kanan's real smart with computers too like his dad right so he he figured it all out how we need to do it and then uh, we said, well, you know, we got to be able to pay for our equipment and get stuff replaced as we need it, stuff like that. So we need to get some sponsors because in the radio days, they were getting their own sponsors. They were paying for that. Right. But we got sponsors for ours in order to upkeep our equipment and stuff. And, right. You know, it helps us pay for gas and stuff going to right. games because we, you know, wherever we're playing, we're there. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, it just evolved from there, really. And then, of course, uh, a couple of years later, uh, Coach Kinley joined us in because he, he was going to the games anyway. And he was just a wealth of information. Of, and he knows all the plays because he calls them all right. <laughs> on, on Tuesday night. Yeah. So on Friday night, he knows every play that's going on. And, and uh, it corrects me a lot because I call a uh, maybe a slant pass. It, it's a – wide receiver screen or something like that. Yeah. And, and so, you know, he, he does that part of it because he's just <laughs> much more knowledgeable about play right. calling than right. I am. Right, right. But um, this is a, this year, today is our 12th year of doing it. And That's we awesome. Just, we are so blessed to have the uh, support of the uh, of the fans that listen to us. And, uh, and we you know, with the phone apps, we have a lot of people that sit in the stands and listen to our call to see what our perspective is, what they're seeing on the field, right? And uh, you know, we're we're just so pleased about that, and 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 like I say, blessed to have the people that, that help us. The sponsors that we've had are so uh, dedicated to us right. and, and really help us out every yeah. year. And then, of course, we have uh, we started a GoFundMe page at one point to help again with additional expenses to uh, to be able to afford to stay on the air right and then Absolutely. Uh, you know it's just it's one thing led to another yeah. and mark is such a phenomenal speaker as you know yeah. uh unfortunately for us he's on the big mic 
doing, yeah, the, the, home doing games. the PA at home games. Right. Uh, but when we, when we go away, I mean, the three of us all there talking, and sometimes we talk over each other, and that, we're okay with that. <laughs> yeah. We're just having a good time. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, if you got to go to the game, you might as well go there and have fun with it. Yeah, it started off with um, – you kind of started off like uh, just like doing a, 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 a you know you like you said you two and then you turn into almost like Frank and Alan Dan there <laughs> like the old Monday Night Football in yeah. the nineties you know you're uh, yep yep uh, what which make you know Three's Company I mean that's a, it's a good that's a good um uh, um uh, you know um trio of, of of guys with knowledge like you said you do the play you do the color commentary and. Yep. Um, Mark's got the voice for radio. Absolutely. Um, um, and uh, and then you, you got Coach Kenley who, you know. Has the knowledge. Yeah, he's got the knowledge. And it's funny because um, he'll uh, he'll throw my dad a shout out. He'll be like, and that's what we call a wheel route, Mr. Goebel. <laughs> uh, my dad had no idea what a, what a wheel route was. Yeah. And, um, I'm trying so to find try a, to give him a uh, picture here to show you from back in the day when Mark and I were by ourselves on the radio. We started uh, during the week, and then on f- Saturday mornings, yeah. we'd go out to Beef O'Brady's, and we'd have kids come in. I remember that. that we and you would, had the uh, you did the show out there. Yeah, player of the game. Player we, of the game. We'd talk to them out there. If I can find this picture, I'll show you one picture I had saved. Which now, um, uh, kind of like what I do, I do player of the week. Yes. Um, which can be found on the uh, South Center um, South Center High athletic page yep. um, every yep. Friday morning. I try to post that up bright and early. Um, a little more earlier the, the couple weeks ago. Um, we'll, be, <laughs> we'll be delayed by two weeks. So, Whether your water is supplied by a public municipality or a private well, for residential or commercial use, Purified Water Services LLC has the solutions to provide you with simply clean water. We offer a complete line of professional water filtration equipment and accessories. Soft water makes a difference you can see and feel. Water heater and appliances last longer with less maintenance. Iron and H2S filters eliminate iron stains and offensive rotten egg odors and protects your water softener equipment from iron fouling. No matter what your problem is, Purified Water Services LLC has a solution. Contact Kenny Williams at 352-446-2709. Yeah, it's a good time, and and the kids love it, man. The kids love – I love having to get the guys coming on there, and they talk about um, – I don't know. I asked them just, just like silly questions. You know, some would say generic, but they're just like, what's your favorite college team? Which, what's your favorite NFL team? Yeah. There's a picture of us. Back oh, in the, yeah. Back in the day. Had a table set up. That's and, right. And the Beef O'Brady's. People eating thing. around you like a salad. And, well, no, that's our engineer <laughs> sitting back there. Oh, <laughs> Cannon sitting back there. But Cannon, Mark sorry. and I, you know, we're on our headsets and we're, and we're live. Doing it live on uh, Saturday mornings. Yeah, that's for right. The, I, for the kids I, I do remember that. I yep. do remember that. Um, funny story about um, Cannon. He, uh, I didn't know he was a South Center graduate. Yep. I didn't. I didn't. I thought he was. We always. He always says he's. He ta- he works in Orlando. I was like, well, maybe he's from Orlando. No. Nope. And then a couple weeks ago. I'm saying a couple weeks ago in the future um, against Hernando, I got there early enough to meet him, and and he was there waiting on them to let him in the gate. And he, uh, him and I got to talking. He's, I was like, "Did you go to South Summer?" And he goes, "Yeah." And I'm like, "How do I not know you? Like, I never saw you running." I think when he graduated, I think uh, he said seventeen, eighteen, seventeen. I'm like, "Wow!" Like that was like. You know that don't that wasn't that long ago. He's a soccer player. Yeah, that's what he was. That's what he he told me. He said um, he played a little bit of uh, he did some wolf pack mm-hmm. and um, he loved it. But he said he just he didn't, he didn't play uh, high school football. Yeah. So I was like I was like well that's why I didn't know you know you because yeah. I know more than more of the kids that played the at, you know the, the athletics um, unless I had you as a like when I was subbing and I had you in class mm-hmm. then I had then I then I knew you but. But he just kind of went under the radar. He said, "Yeah, no, it's all good." Yeah. But uh, he's a great guy, and he, he, does, he does a lot of great. That, that's, I mean, that's that's a lot during that. That's a live broadcast. Right, right. 
And um, yeah, he gets everything set up yeah. and gets everything plugged in and, and oh, I know. has it ready for us. I know how it is, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he's a, you know, he's a he's a soccer fan, he's a Florida Gator fan. Yeah. Uh he's uh Y'all yeah, don't hold that against him, dude. No, no, no. Okay. No, he's a good guy. Well you got Kenley, he's a gator. So <laughs> yep, yep. two two knolls and a gator in that bro in that booth. <laughs> um let me ask you this. When you're broadcasting, what was I mean tell us about like your favorite part of Friday night. And we'll just go with a home game because we don't want to – I'm not trying to throw shade on anybody's complex or whatever. Mm-hmm. I know you all been to some places where you're like – like, I, I won't say the name of the school, but up north near Gainesville, you – you downtown Gainesville. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> yes. With there was looked like a watchtower. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, even when I was filming, I was in the stands. I think I was in there with you. We yeah. could have done a video <laughs> broadcast. Oh my God. <laughs> like NBC sports up there. And it was cold. Yeah. It my was goodness. cold. Um, what, what is your favorite? I mean, what's one of your thing, favorite things about Friday night? You know, honestly, it's about the fans. Yeah. Uh, I like the fans in the stands. That's why we open the windows. Yeah. So we get that ambiance. So we get yeah. that noise that yeah. we hopefully people can hear it yeah. in the background when they're listening to it. Yeah. Um, oh, you can. You can hear the cheerleaders go. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> ROW. <laughs> a, a lot of it's blocked out because of our headsets. Yeah. Yeah. But when we make a good play, you can. Yeah. I mean, and we look out the window. <laughs> oh, they're going people crazy. Are standing up. You're going crazy. Them. Yeah. And when we see the stands full, yeah. we're so glad that they fill the stands. Oh, and, man. You know, the Raider faithful. <laughs> Yeah. They travel, oh, yeah, travel they do. well. They do, and, and the home games. And, and I expect tonight to be a, a full stadium. Right. I hope it is, right? Because uh, they're going to need our support, and they're going to need us hollering yeah. as loud as we can to to bring home a win. A win. But that, you know, the fan base, I guess, is my product. One of my favorite things. The other is, of course, the coaching staff. Uh, cohesiveness in coaching is so important, mm-hmm. and. And that's what South Sumter has over the years, you know, when Inman was there yeah. and then carrying on with Ty and, you know, Coach Heilman being there almost 30 they're, years they're now. They're over 30. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, Got there in 88. Yeah. And, uh, and the other guys and the former players that have come back to help coach. Right. I think that is just so cool. Yeah. And, and, and they know what they're doing. So Absolutely. That's a, that's a good time. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize – how close, uh, uh, such a tight knit, cl- you know, we, we're, it's a very, very close group. And I think, you know, the, the key to any successful, um, whether it's yourself, your life, a team, you need to surround yourself with people that, that you get along with, that are knowledgeable of what you're doing and who share the same goal, mm-hmm. um, or common ground, yep. you know, um, that's one of my cameras dying. Um, speaking of common ground, um, but anyways, uh, it, it, when you do so, you you are more successful than you'll ever you, than you can ever imagine. Because yeah. I mean, you, I mean, it helps. In so, it's such a tremendous uh, uh, and helpful thing, um, and that's what we've been so successful with over the years. Um, you gotta you gotta think. How long has Coach Sherman done it? And he's all these great coaches that are, well, you know, over half are still here. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you're talking about Keith Allman and Ty Lawrence and um, Coburn. Co- Stan Coburn has been here for 20 plus years. Um, I mean, these guys, and then you've got your, you've got your kids that you coach that are, that are not kids anymore. Right. They're grown men that yeah, McDonald's want... All American coaching linebackers. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, Earl Everett. Yeah, don't get any better than Earl. No, and, and, you know, and, and Mikey wasn't a, a great player, but he was there. Oh, Mikey and was. He a, was a team captain yeah. the senior year. Oh yeah, and I, you got you know Darren Williston, uh, um, your highness Morgan, your highness Morgan that were phenomenal players, and and we got imports like uh, Chris Holman, uh, Chris Holman, <laughs> Chris Gauntlet. I could get Chris Holman. Yeah, Chris Chris Holman helps out. A phenomenal coach. Uh, Chris Gauntlet. Um, he is um, former head coach at DeVaries. Yes, he's and, and he's such a defensive sound like minded guy. Oh, you know, geez. oh my gosh, you can you can talk to him. I talked to him some about Wolfpack. Like like what should we do? Like things that we can like. To make not just the kids better, but our coaching techniques, what we can do better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and I could ask any of those coaches, but um, I like to just pick 
I'll sit there and pick Chris's brain. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, and I give him such a hard time all the time. And, but, um, but he's such a great guy. And, uh, we seriously, I mean, we couldn't ask for a better group of guys. Right. Coach Baker's there. Yep. Um, and, uh, I mean, we, we, we've had, we've had people come and go. We, I mean, I remember Todd Wurtenberger there. Um, um, uh, uh, <laughs> Coach Marty Go- Williams. Marty Williams. Coach Gostad was there. Brent Gostad. Brent yeah. Gostad. Um, uh, uh, Br- uh, Coach Helms. Yeah. Richie, uh, Richie Helms. Helms. My God, he was uh, our O line kids. That was their second. They father. loved. You. Oh God, yeah, that was the second father. Um, well, Richie played a state championship team yeah, in Alabama. Was, yeah, he was great when he was in high school. Yeah, yeah. awesome athlete. But um, I mean, we we just continue to s- surround ourselves with with people like that, and it's just like, oh my gosh, like no wonder our kids are successful. You know what I mean? When when we we provide such knowledge and guidance to help, oh yes, you Lord. know, carry them along their journey. You know, I mean, if you added the years up of that coaching staff of, of their experience, it's easily two hundred years. Oh my gosh, yeah. and it's uh, you know just that's what makes. Have you ever won a state championship? No. But have we been close? Absolutely. Absolutely. And we are consistent. Yes. And that's what it's all about, yep. the consistency. That's right. We don't go out and recruit kids. Nope. We take what shows up. That's and right. And we try to make them the best player they can possibly be. And the better side of that is we try to make them better men. Right. Absolutely. For the long run. Right. That's then And then that's, that's what it's all – sports aside – if you can make someone a better person, because that's what's gonna, it's like, it, it's like when you talk about, um, like college kids, yeah, they play athlete, they're they do their athletic stuff, but when that athletic time is over, what what are they gonna do next? Right, they need to be that person that they need to be, or they're gonna have this job that's gonna carry them. They have to have a backup plan, mm-hmm. and um, and we do a lot of that with our kids. We make sure, I mean, and it speaks because all these other players, like I was talking to Ty, he loves it when these guys come back. Yeah, you know, I mean, on a Friday night, we had, we the other the other that one home game against um, uh, Zephyr Hills, uh, Joey Martinez was there, and and it was it was so good to see Andy him. Kaysen. Yeah, Andy Kaysen, when the reunion, they came back. Oh, yep. my gosh. All those guys coming back. That just speaks volume for our coaching staff, our, our program. And it just continues to get better and better. Yep. Yep. Well, I think I've picked your brain long enough. <laughs> and, uh, Mike, I appreciate you coming on today. And uh, Well, it's a pleasure. And I appreciate the invitation. You know, I kind of threw it out there. <laughs> Last week I said, "Well, you've been on there and I've been on there, but I haven't been on there yet." I wasn't saying that no, to get invited. I, I know, I know. But, and you had told me already, "I'm going to yeah. have you on sometime." Yeah. But uh, I threw that out there, and I said, "Well, Billy, here's this. Hey, maybe you'll put me on the show." <laughs> it wasn't like that. Well, at all. But the thing is, um, is yeah, it just the timing, and, yeah. and, and, and like like you and you and Julie you are like on cruises, and <laughs> and, and and I'm like, oh well. Going back to what I said, it just wasn't that it wasn't the right time. Yep, yep. And um, when the time did come, I'm glad it happened. Yep. And um, but I I wish you the best of of luck in the future with the successful our, our Raider Radio app. Yep. Um, and I, I I promise you I'm going to do more plug into that. Um, I need to get all the logistics and stuff so I can make a promo and flash it on there and. Um, just what you guys are doing is just a, such a great job. And, well, uh, I, I think because we're all graduates of there, and uh, three of us played football, yeah, South Sumter, it just it makes it that much easier to be a fan, absolutely, and to to love what we do every Friday night. We just we just <laughs> we just have such a good time. Oh yeah, you know. Oh yeah. If it's an away game, sometimes yeah. we travel together. Yeah, we we'll go out and get a bite to eat, and then we go to the game. And, yeah, and then you know, coming back home, if we're traveling together, we're talking about the game. And what do you think about this player? And how's about that player? And Absolutely. We, that's all we talk about. <laughs> right. Well, you know what's funny is the other other night at Hernando when you had me on at halftime to to kind of talk about the show and stuff. I that was I enjoyed that. Yeah. And I was like, man. I wish I had more than four minutes. <laughs> they were. I think Hernando was just ready to go home. I, but yeah. I mean, they didn't even let our band play. Right. I mean, that's how right. bad it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, at halftime. But it was cool, and it was it was cool to hear. You know, be on your side of 
per se the ball, you know, on your side of the field, yep. um, have, have go through what you guys do, and it's a little bit different from what I do, um, and it's a little nerve wracking at first because you're live, and even though you do have that 15 second buffer, which by the way I think it's 15 seconds probably something like that. I just let you know, Dickie Lovett has you on his phone at the, <laughs> the forest sideline, forest gaming. <laughs> I can hear you guys somewhere. I'm like, they're in the stands, but they're not talking right now. <laughs> and I look back, and and Dickie's got you on his he, on. I don't think it was in the clip, but he had it on his phone, and I could hear you and Mike and, and John talking on the 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 radio. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, he's listening to the to the podcast. <laughs> Casey misses something. That's awesome. So even our sideline reporter, Dickie Lovett, yeah, it has yeah, you guys on in it, and just. We love what you do for the community. We love what you guys are doing. Um, and we just, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan. And um, I'd love to come back on sometime. Yeah, well, I'll just throw that out there. The invitation's <laughs> open. We, You know, we used to interview uh, people. Yeah. Uh, Boo's been on there before. Yeah. Coach Sherman, one time at South Lake, we had Coach Sherman come up and because uh, we were in a lightning delay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember um, that. And, uh, you know, Kirsty Merritt's been on there yeah. with us. I think I sent my brother at one once. <laughs> Jimmy came yeah. on. Yep. So uh, some of my baseball guy Garrett yeah. Cave came up one time. Oh yeah. And uh, we used to do that. We did, we just haven't had that opportunity. Yeah. Dickie used to come up every week. Yeah. You but when the stadium got redone and yeah. his bad knee, it was much. too hard for yeah. him to get there. Uh, but it. Uh, we're, I think we're going. We try to do that when we see guys. Yeah. We've had uh, RK Seven up there. Yeah. One time. And uh, just guys that, that have played there before or girls that played yeah. there before. Uh, we actually did a softball game one time, you recall, a couple of years ago. They were in the playoffs, and we got a call and said, hey, you want to do your radio station? We jumped right out there oh, and did that'd it be so at a playoff cool. game. In the, That's in awesome. The, I, I, I do remember two that now. Years ago, yeah, two I do years remember ago. that now, yeah. yeah. And it, it was fun. I yeah. mean, a little different, and you got a oh, lot yeah. of downtime between innings, but we, we made it work. Yeah, you feel it. You and, feel yeah, it. it was it was a good time. Yeah. And it's, we were glad to support the girls so let me ask you this before we go what do you think of that new stadium i think it's phenomenal oh, it's, it's just absolutely you know and I, it, it's we've been to some rough stadiums oh and some yes. you know hawthorne stadium was not that great the bleachers were awful wow P.K. Young's bleachers were awful. Yeah. I mean, we actually had a pass caught at second base on <laughs> – you recall that I do. football field? I, I do. Which reminded me of where we used to play. Yeah. Our football field encroached was, was, on the baseball <laughs> field or vice versa yeah. over at the old school. The center became but, left center. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but we've been to some We've been to some pretty nice stadiums. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Stark has a beautiful new stadium. Yeah, they got a nice field. Uh, and uh, uh, Bowles is, is beautiful. Bowles is and, always beautiful. And uh, it just – uh, some are good and some are not so good. Which I need to point out one thing: sure. our our baseball field, uh-huh. as far as the dugout setup, yeah. is probably the best in Central Florida. Oh yeah, we have a phenomenal dugout Love that those guys rebuilt right when they moved the fences back. And, and you got a new it. clubhouse too. And we got a new clubhouse last year, right. uh, and it's it's wonderful. Got thirty lockers around the walls. I got to go in there and check it and, out. Uh, and yeah. AC and the nice tile floors. And it's just, it's, I mean, beautiful. Yeah. But, and our field is usually in pretty good shape. We have some bad spots, but that's sprinkler issues yeah. and stuff. But our dugouts are as good or better than any we played yeah. as far as having room. Each cubby has a place to hang a bat or two, has a place for a baseball to sit in the way they designed it with that PVC pipe. And, and then a, a rack up top to put yeah. your, whatever, your glove and your hat in. Yeah. And it's just it's just a great baseball stadium. And then with the new, uh, even the new uh, concession stand. Yeah. And that uh, press box for the baseball field yeah. is phenomenal with two doors. That Absolutely. Roll up and you have way more room in there. <laughs> way more room <clears throat> compared to the one we built at the old field. Yes. <laughs> Your yeah. dad, I think, was part of that too, building yep. that thing. Well, what's funny is I was part of building the, help building the softball. Um, oh, okay. Um, we did a lot of stuff in the dugouts there. Yeah. Because um, if you remember, if you were sitting in the opposing um, dugout, um, you couldn't very well see anybody bat. Yeah. Because there was a wall there. That's right. That's right. Or when they put, <laughs> they would move the bleachers into right field. <laughs> And you couldn't see the batter because of the dugout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you're at the top, you're like, whoa, oh, let me, 
Who is did she get? Did she hit? Did she swing? <laughs> <laughs> but they <clears throat> they went so far as to put a hole, I and mean, they were knocking a hole out so you could at least see through the dugout. Yeah. But how many years was that like? That? Oh, I mean, it was like yeah. good, nobody nobody thought of that. Like, eh. <laughs> we'll see the ball when it hits, and yeah. then it goes. And we're like, oh, there's the ball. There yeah. it goes. Yeah. But um, all three all three facilities are just uh, top notch. I mean, they're very very good. Yep. Um, yep. And our and shout out to Casey Martin. He does a great job keeping those up. I mean, no, he does. He, he does, does. He really does. When uh, baseball season starts, I'm in conversation with him all the time. Uh, you know, running that Gator and stuff. Yep. I run out of gas. I call him. Somebody comes down, bring yep. gas. Just, uh, just if call. We need him. Something cleared up. That's or right. Raked or whatever. He takes care of it right away. Yep. And yeah, he does a phenomenal. Does job. A, does a great job. Doesn't yep. get doesn't get a lot of recognition. Um, he's kind of like the stunt man. <laughs> He does all the stuff backstage yeah. that nobody sees. And so, right. uh, yeah, anyways. Um, well, guys, that's uh, going to be all for today. I appreciate uh, Mr. Mike Foote stopping by. And uh, until next time, we'll see you again. Have a good one. <laughs>